We've been practicing our wuxi finger hold all week long in preparation for this review of Kung Fu Panda 4. Christian, my great friend, Christian Harloff, already had the skadoosh part down because he's a pro. All right. I needed well, to work on mine. You know, I needed it. Uh, in my, and again, my six-year-old has been making sure that I get it right. Otherwise, I'm not allowed in the house. <laughs> He has so many moves. Also, bring home dumplings. That's all you got to do. Um, Christian Harloff, great friend of ours. So thankful to you to have some time today to share with me, to be here to talk about Kung Fu Panda 4. We hung out together at the screening. Alonzo's not feeling well, so I'm delighted that you are here. I think you like this movie a little better than I did. Um, if you guys are here, you probably already know Christian's channel, but if not, you should go and check it out. You are at the Christian Harloff, yes? Yeah, that's it. That's it. We're trying to get you to 200,000 subscribers. Try and fast. Yeah, try by the end of the year. We'll see. It's a, it's a lofty goal, but we're, but we're trying. You got to do it. Yeah, you have a, a fervent following. And if you guys are curious about UFO content, yeah. Christian's your guy. I'm He's sorry. very knowledgeable. Um, also knowledgeable about DreamWorks animation movies. Christian, what is Kung Fu Panda 4 about? The Dragon Warrior. It's who I am. Skidoosh. What do I know about being a spiritual leader? What is it you're holding? A cookie? Ah! I keep saying Kung Fu, Kung Fu Fanda, because I said <laughs> in my out of the theater and I say it here, Kung Fu Fanda. Maybe that's a Freudian slip. I don't know. Poe now is, he's reached the highest level. And so his master's like, well, listen, you don't want to stay as, as the dragon warrior. You want to go up. You want a promotion. He's like, I don't want a promotion. Let's stay where I'm going to stay. He's like, you get a promotion. Find out who the, ne who the new dragon warrior is. Now go, go do it and have an adventure. And what does he do? He goes and he goes on an adventure and he's got to find a new dragon warrior. But in the same time, there's a chameleon running around, taking the shifts of other past masters and looking to cause havoc. And that is played by the wonderful Viola, Viola Davis. Davis. Viola Davis. Um, and when so Viola Davis, um, the second you hear Viola Davis is going to be a villain, I'm like, I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it's simple. It's predictable. And I think it's just. OK. It's not even okay. This movie is bad. This movie is actively bad. Because the first ones are good. Like one and two are great. Yeah. Three is not quite so good. But so much of the, the delicacy of the artistry that made those movies singular and gave them like a texture that you don't see in other kinds of DreamWorks animation. Mm -hmm. I mean, How to Train Your Dragon, those ones are gorgeous because, you know, Roger Deacon is, is your cinematography consultant. So those are beautiful. But there's like a very specific kind of texture and like a, a variety of kinds of animation in those movies that's missing here. This looks a lot like most DreamWorks animation movies. It's sort of nondescript in that regard. Like even the texture of the fur on Shifu and all that just looks kind of, there's like a sameness to it. And the, the kind of gentle sense of inner peace you know the, the mm -hmm. through line for all of them even that feels missing and it's just like a frantic action movie this feels like it's geared more toward younger kids which is why i, I suspect your kids are gonna like it <laughs> yeah I, I don't i don't disagree with anything that you just said there i don't disagree with a <laughs> single thing i think yeah. that it definitely is missing the magic of what the other ones had they're definitely trying to cut costs all the way around i think that's one of the reasons you don't see angelina jolie in this and the reason mm. you don't see Seth Rogen. i think they're they're clearly trying to cut costs and do this for a budget because they want to capitalize on the on the ip in general but you don't get that raw emotion i think what you said at the end there is exactly right this is something as i looked at I even said it in my in my out of the theater reaction i look at this in two different eyes if i look at this as just someone who if i went to go see this by myself just to judge someone as a fan of animation i probably would be leaning more on the side of what you are saying but i mm -hmm. but as i start to look into well will my six-year-old enjoy this and the answer is yes and it does feel like something that she could find on netflix or find on something too but she'll would she be invested in it will she care about it will she be bored no she won't yeah. um because she also doesn't have that thing you and i have seen thousands of animation movies at this point that <laughs> it's about this movie's very predictable and i think you said it again really well and you're out of the theater reaction aquafina is playing the same role in everything she does it's no longer special when she's in it she's like oh and I knew from the second she shows up, first of all, I said, well, he's going to meet, he'll meet, he's going to meet some new apprentice pretty soon. And I wonder who she's going to be voiced by because I knew. And I'm like, and then it was Aquafina. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. And then Aquafina will wind up every beat you've seen a million times. Yep. Yeah. I mean, she plays that 
wisecracking sidekick role really well, but she's been doing it a lot, and particularly in animated films, whether it's The Little Mermaid or Raya and the Last Dragon. Just um, a migration recently, too. Migration, yeah. And, I mean, she's got a lot more variety in her, her paint box than that. I mean, if you've mm-hmm. seen The Farewell, she's quite lovely in that. And so I wish she get a chance to do more than just be the wisecracking sidekick. It's funny that you mentioned that Angelina Jolie and all the other Furious Five voices aren't in here because mm-hmm. I feel like inherently the point of them is that they are stronger as a team, right? In the right. beginning, we're told, oh, they're all off on their individual missions. And there's a real quick little explainer of where each of them is. Mm-hmm. But the whole point of the Furious Five and Poe's integration into them is that they work better as a team. And when a Viper's right. wrapping around Poe's belly and he's shooting out dumplings like it's a machine yeah. gun, like yeah. that's the, the collaboration magnifies their strengths. So like, why are we, but I, I, that's a good point that you make though. They probably couldn't afford Seth Rogen this time. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to because they don't. They didn't want to take that. They didn't want to take that risk yeah. where it's like, okay, look at all the problems that studios are having with the massive budgets and what they want to get as far as return. If you cut costs on this, and this is a movie that's going to do very well because there is not a lot for parents to take their kids to see. I've seen this movie already. Like I said, I didn't dislike it as much as you did, but I didn't love it. But I'm going yeah. to see it again this weekend because my kids want to see it. Yeah. So um, that is, and there's going to be a lot of families to see it, and this movie is going to do very well i don't yeah. think it's as terrible as, as <laughs> you do um but it is it's certainly not it's not as special as the other three there's no doubt the writing was really bad yeah i agree and it feels the pacing is really rushed some of the and there's a scene where there's a big chase scene and there's a sight gag involving a bull in a china shop <laughs> which is inherently a funny idea <laughs> yeah but the execution of that is it zips by Rush. so fast yeah. it doesn't Rush. give you a chance to like luxuriate in the absurdity of that and like the details of that right. Right. and there's a bit where there's a bunch of a bunch of the chameleons little security guards are all napping right mm-hmm. they're they're also lizards of some sort mm-hmm. they're all napping and they're trying to be really really quiet and this big manhole cover mm-hmm. goes like clunk clunk like they should play that gag out as long as possible and they zip out of that too fast like think i just feel like over and over again the the pacing of it just feels wrong and the puns are dumb like i like a bad dumb pun Mm -hmm. and they're really bad here (laughs) well it's like it's it's like if you give a comedian a, a one comedian a particular act but another comedian the same act depending on who the comedian is it could be the same exact act, but the com- the other comedian can deliver it that much better. Yeah. Um, and that's maybe exactly what happened here. I'm not sure if, if it was. I I Forgive me. I didn't look, but I'm not sure if it's the same director as the other. I don't it's believe, not. I don't believe it is. And you can tell. Yeah. No, this guy directed the first Trolls. Uh, I like the first Trolls. So this is a script problem then. This is a script problem. The, two, the three writers, two of them are the returning writers. And that's a third huh. writer with them. Yeah. I don't, anyway. I mean, look, sometimes. When you have a fr- I, when you have a franchise and you just try to push another movie out because you don't get the same doesn't matter who's back he doesn't have that mm-hmm. same flavor and yeah and but they might not be going for that because what was so special about the first three was that you and I could go and you could go with your son I could go with my my daughters and I could look and I can go I'm enjoying this as much as they are well maybe this time they're going. This really wasn't, this one's really not for you guys. It's, it's for them. And I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's what it is. Um, it needed, it needed Gary Oldman to come and be an evil peacock. <laughs> that's and in, in every movie. That's what he should be. Right. No, uh, we have no. peacocks in our neighborhood. They're yeah. never diabolical. And I wish they were, they just yeah. scamper about. They're actually dumb creatures. Um, <laughs> Christian, what's your number on Kung Fu Panda for? At a five. At a 10. At a 10. Um, I will go, I'll go six. Five point okay. five point five. Can I do that? You can do decimals. We like decimals around here. Yeah. Five point five. I'm gonna say a three point two because Viola Davis brings it. Yeah. She can't do anything she but be great despite the shoddy material. Mm-hmm. And there's one bit that you and I laughed at, Christian. That I don't want to give away. It's like a random throwaway gag that you and I both laughed out loud at. That I'm like, oh, good, yeah. yay, laughter. Yeah, remind me, remind me off air. I'll tell you after. All right. All right, Christian, you're the best, folks. Go subscribe to Christian's channel. Subscribe to us yet if you have not, and uh, hang out with me on the Oscar night. I'm doing a live Oscar live stream, a vertical live stream. I'll we'll have a link to that down below. So come hang out with me. I can't wait to see you. Thanks.